Hey guys, it's time for another episode of Coffee with Christo. So, um, man, this coffee's kind of hot, so... Ah, but that's nice. It's so nice. Today's the Players' Championship, and it's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful moms out there. Thanks for bringing us into the world. Ah, that's good. Now, the, uh, the Players' Championship is shaping up to be pretty cool. I don't know if you guys saw yesterday, uh, but my main man, Sergio Garcia, whoo, he shot a 67 in high winds. <laughs> what ball control the guy has. Now, obviously, uh, my MSC subscribers know that I'm a big Ben Hogan fan, and then after that is probably Jack Nicklaus and Lee Trevino. And then after that, it's Sergio Garcia. Sergio has been a major inspiration uh, to me since I started this whole thing because I think he's the probably the greatest ball striker of this generation. And, uh, and he's really become a much better putter or it's come back around the last few years or so. And I'm happy to see him really finding a technique that's working for him. You know, but I want to talk a little bit about about Sergio as an inspiration. Now, uh, a lot of you guys know that follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, that I made a call the morning of the Masters that he was going to win his first major. And I, from time to time, I have these premonitions. It's usually on the Masters. My golf buddies know that um, a lot of people, uh, a, a lot of my friends know that I've called like a, a master's winner, I'll have this like vision of somebody slipping on the green jacket when I'm waking up or whatever it is at some point. I'll be like, oh my God, it's going to be so-and-so. Kind of crazy, I know, but you know, shoot, I'm just telling you what I what happens. And uh, this year it was Sergio and Sergio is 37 years old. So um, he's about the age that uh, Mr. Hogan was when he was, uh, you know, coming back from that accident. And uh you know, Ben Hogan didn't win a major until he was 34, and he went on to win nine majors. And Phil Mickelson was a late bloomer. He didn't win a major until he was uh, pretty old, too. And then, you know, he racked up six of them. You know, so I think that Sergio has a lot of good golf left in him, especially now that he seems like he's really matured and, and come around, you know. Ben Hogan used to say, you know, I don't understand why I can't close. He couldn't close for the longest time. Um, Sergio has been winning for a long time, but just not the really big events. So uh, we'll see what happens today. He's, he's kind of far back, but, you know, oh, my gosh. Okay, this is why I'll tell you <laughs> why he's not out of it. Uh, I was reading, uh, reading up on how Sergio, um, you know, once he fixed his putting, how he started to get pretty hot. And I'll tell you the main things that he talks about here. Uh, he talks about his read and his routine. He doesn't like to take a long time. He says that he was starting to get too into his putts and taking much too long. He says that just, that just messes with your head. You know, when he was a kid, he was a, a genius putter, people said. And he's like, I just walked up and knocked it in the hole. So that was interesting. He changed his grip to the claw, which was a huge thing. And this was something I found interesting. Now, these are the, the reasons why it's worth looking at this stuff. He said that I like to practice long putting. Okay, that's the weakest part of my putting is my lag putting. And I try and focus on six feet in. But he focuses on long putting. And he said, I think this is where you develop feel. You know, when, when you're jamming a, a four-footer in the in the cup, you know, there's probably not a lot of feel. It's all about direction, you know, but uh, that's a really good tip to really focus on your long putting to get feel because he says, for me, uh, medium range putts feel makeable. I expect to make everything inside 15 feet, you know, so that's pretty interesting. And uh, this year, I think it's 2014, he was uh, ranked number two in putts made from 10 to 15 feet sinking 38.6% of those suckers. That's, that's a pretty high clip, let me tell you. But listen to this. This is what, what I was going to say about Sergio, because he can get hot. Um, 
When I shot 61 in the second round of the WGC Bridgestone Invitational in August, including 27 on the back nine, I had 11 consecutive one putts. See, that's why I say Sergio might be in the mix today because that sucker can get hot. Now, let me tell you, I think the huge thing with uh, Sergio um, about, uh, about being an inspiration is, uh, I think he's a low core player. I think he swings a lot like Mr. Hogan. Um, you will begin to hear in the future about low core, mid core, and high core players. Uh, I've come across some professionals, uh, tour players, we're talking about this. Um, Mr. Hogan was a low core player. And uh, I am a recovering high core player. So I'll tell you, you know, my swing evolution and the movie that I'm making, by the way, is telling the story of my swing evolution and Mr. Hogan. Um, my swing evolution is kind of a grail quest, uh, if you guys know Campbellian mythology, uh, because I, you know, I broke par in 2014. And with that golf swing, if I had not changed a thing and just kept doing that, I probably would be a better golfer than I am now, potentially. Because, I mean, you know, I, I can get it around. It's kind of a more natural, I mean, that's kind of like my instinctual, you know, swing your swing kind of stuff. But, you know, I was still... I was still uh, early extension, goat humping, you know, yada, yada, yada. So I felt that I wasn't, I had not achieved what I set out to achieve. And I'm going to continue to work on it because I'm going after the holy grail of golf swings. Um, so, you know, so my score is a byproduct of my technique. And uh, that's why I'm so obsessed with it. And that's why I, I love watching uh, Sergio Garcia. But uh, I believe Sergio Garcia is a low core player. Um, and uh, it wasn't until I got to work with Mr. McHatton, Greg McHatton, after I shot uh, my broke par for the first time in 18 holes that uh, he helped me to realize what was missing uh, out of my low core swing. You know, and he talks about the guts and the work and, you know, the lower body and all of that, which is key. Very, very interesting. So I'm really, really excited to see how Sergio plays today. I, I mean, he's hitting the ball like crazy. I mean, the way he seems to really be pulling the handle through. And, and yesterday he was hitting a lot of these kind of like choppy, low finish, you know, punches and things, but man, he cr controlled the ball just beautifully. So uh, good luck today, Sergio. I, I would like to see you reach your full promise. Uh, when I think back to Medina in 99, I think everybody knew you had a lot in you, and I still think you got a lot of game left. You know, so that's fantastic. Now, I am working on my movie. My computer's right back there, and I'm working on finishing this movie uh, hopefully for early June. Uh, we'll see. I'm just killing myself, you know. I'm happy that this last week I've started to put up some of my more regular type of YouTube videos, and I am going to continue to try and put up a few videos a week um, uh, while I'm working on my film. And uh, I'm telling you guys, I think my Hogan project is going to continue because I've had every door that opens opens three more doors, okay? So I don't think I'm done yet. However, a story has an arc to it. And I don't think the arc of this story can be any better than what has just recently occurred. And, uh, and that's why it's time you just, you know when you know. Like, it's just, I did it, you know? It's like, it's pretty crazy, but I feel like the arc of my story is pretty pretty complete right now. Um, but I hope to continue to explore and add to the history of Mr. Hogan with firsthand accounts of people that knew him. So I will continue to do that. Now, this is difficult. I need music, for example. Any of you guys out there have friends that have great music or anything they'd like to donate to the film? I could use some cool music. 
you know, if I have to use the same old canned music that I use in my videos, I will do that. You know, but music is super duper expensive, so I can't really have an original soundtrack or something. I'll tell you, we used uh, Paradise City in a movie that I made, and that cost a half a million bucks. I mean, geez, I mean, of course, I'm not going to be able to do anything like that. You know, but you guys can pick up a t-shirt. I still got some cool t-shirts. I'm all out of polos now, but... You know, you can help the film if you want to pick up a t-shirt or a video or something like that. But yeah, uh, my email is my swing evolution at yahoo.com if anybody has friends that have like music or they do some scoring or anything like that. You know, maybe we could uh, work something out. But I really, really am proud and honored to be involved in uh, Mr. Hogan's legacy. I feel that it was meant to be. And, uh, and in the very near future, I think I'm going to be delivering a film that will add to the history of golf. And I think it will also be quite enjoyable. So thank you so much for being uh, loyal MSE people. And I uh, hope you enjoy watching the players today. I'll have it on that TV while I'm editing back there. So hit them long and hit them straight.